This is a great hard off. I really like this area. Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. I am in a field, of course. We're out walking, looking for games, and I'm in between shops right now. So I wanted to show you guys what it's like to go game hunting in Tokyo, not like all the way in the countryside. Today we're in Mitaka. I used to live around this area. We're on the outskirts of Tokyo. We're technically still in Tokyo. This is like a train ride away from Shinjuku Station, and it's definitely still good, as you're about to see. So get your walking shoes on, let's get our train tickets, and let's go game I'm hunting. I'm excited. Let's go. And here we go, off to the races. Look at this beautiful little retro game section. They seem to have a lot. Here's the newer games. Yeah, they have a lot of PS4 games as well as PS2 and PS1 games in the back. Yeah, this is this is gonna be fun. Let's uh, dig in and see what their prices are like, eh? And let's start off with their PC game section. I haven't seen this ever. They, they I've never seen a sign like that that says PC games. They got the Dreamcast and the Saturn one in the back. I see those, but I've never seen a dedicated PC game section like this that was actually labeled as such and let's go down and see what they have and unfortunately the PC game section itself isn't that crazy we've got SimCity 4 over here for a thousand one hundred not bad they seem to have placed this together with the PC engine and mega CD games on top of it and here we have Dungeon Siege for 550 and yeah this one is definitely coming with me, I take it back. Uh, they do have some bangers. Dungeon Seas, I remember playing this. This is one of the first games I've ever played as a LAN game. It's a top-down fantasy game and you can play this through LAN connection and have like four or three or four people just join your party and go through the whole game. It's really cool. Then next to it, we have the original Half-Life 2 in a standalone box. That's really, really cool. It's uh, 2,200. Bit much for me for a PC game, but yeah, really nice to see this. I got my Half-Life 2 with the orange box when that came out because it was the only thing we can get digitally through Steam. That's when I really started to get into PC gaming. Back when Steam had like three or four games total. <laughs> kind of crazy to think about. And 880 Guild Wars Faction, just another one of those notable titles. This isn't the first MMO they ever played but it definitely is up there as one of the first. So yeah, really cool to find these. Then next to all of that, we've got Combat Flight Simulator 2 for 6,600 World War II Pacific Theater. That is an expensive PC game right there. Cool to see though. I like the Combat Flight Simulator series. It's, it's a nice addition to the regular one. Then look at that, they have a beautiful, well-stocked Nintendo 64 section. That's what good old 4AM likes to see. Let's uh, see what they have to offer for us. So this is a uh, Battle Phoenix 64. I've never seen this one for 880. It seems to be sort of a Beyblade type thing. I, I don't know what this is, it's 880, so I'm gonna leave this here. Probably regret it later, just to see what it's worth and see if it's worth my time. Man, I always regret putting things back like this. Then here's the uncommon Pokemon Stadium 2. This is not the same as our Pokemon Stadium 2. Since our Pokemon Stadium 2 was actually this one, Pokemon Gold and Silver, I think. And, our, and the original Japanese Pokemon Stadium was uh, just unreleased in the West. I think it's an exclusive. I'm not too sure about that. I'm definitely gonna check that out later. So I actually looked this up because a few videos ago, a viewer corrected me on this and I actually didn't know this myself. So Pokemon Stadium 2 in Japan is what we know as the original Pokemon Stadium with the Game Boy expansion and all of that. And Pokemon Stadium 2 that we have in the West is actually Pokemon Stadium Gold and Silver in Japan. And the original Pokemon Stadium that Japan got, we never got it. It's a completely unreleased game in the West. It's pretty different than the one that we know and I guess they thought it just wasn't good enough. I'm not sure what the reason is, but hey, 
It's pretty fun. You should definitely look it up if you have the chance. Yeah, looking up top, they seem to have a Hey You Pikachu for 550. Definitely going to be picking this up. I don't have the mic or anything that goes with it, but hey, 550 uh, Pokemon related title for the N64. Definitely going with me today. This Pokemon Stadium 2 is definitely going on my maybe pile as well. I'm not sure if 1100 is the right price. It doesn't have the manual, but I, I don't really come across this one as much. I always come across the other ones, so I'm going to put it on the side for now. Then here's Top Gear Rally. Don't see this one either. 1650, I'm going to leave this until I get into that realm of games. I'm trying to get the cheapest ones as much as possible for now. And then here is two copies of Mickey's Magical Tetris. There's one here for 1650 that is complete and kind of minty-ish, if you can call it that. And there's her missing manual one with a bit of a faded top for 880. And considering this game always goes for like two, 3,000 yen even, I'm gonna be picking this up. This is a really great version of Tetris. I've talked about it before. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but definitely going home with me. Next to that, there's a Turok 64. I'm hitting a lot of games that I've never seen in Hard House before. So I'll check these out and see if they're worth what I'm finding there for today, but definitely loving what I'm seeing here today. All right, so I've, I've got my little maybe pile over here. I'm gonna go get a basket and see what else this Hard House has to offer. The rest of the titles are just regular old N64 titles that we find everywhere, but really cool to see how much they have. Still thinking about this Turok though. I've never paid 2000 yen for an N64 game, but it might be worth it. Let's put it on the maybe pile as well. All right, let's look at their Game Boy section. Even here, it's all like pretty well laid out. They've got some hamster games. I think I have most of these. I don't think I have this one, but I'm just not sure at this point. I got to sort out my hamster games from last time. Been down here by the GameCube section, they have Animal Crossing for 330 yen. It says it's scratched, but that's that's still a crazy price. I already have these. So uh, yeah, let's put that one back. And next to this Starfy 2, I found this crazy game. I've never seen this before, and it looks like the cutest thing I've ever seen. It says Ochaken no Hea, like tea dog's room, whatever that means. And I don't know, it, it's a dog. He's made of tea leaves, and it's the cutest thing I've ever seen, 500 yen. That one is absolutely going into my basket that is crazy we we really are cleaning house over here let's keep on looking i kind of combined the dreamcasts over here with the mega drive over here that's kind of cool puya puya for 880 that is a great price for puya puya i don't even have a mega drive as i hit that thing over there i don't even have a mega drive but i didn't grow up with one and they're very expensive compared to other consoles but still really cool to find look at this game it's called dragon zwai I don't know, this this is cool. It's a Mahjong game, unfortunately, but still cool. Like there's a lot of these fantasy games on the Mega Drive that I do want to check out. It is Shining Force. Like there's a certain genre of RPG on the Mega Drive that I guess it has its own flavor. Really cool to find. <laughs> Now right, let's have a look at the Super Nintendo section over here. This is this Masters Golf game. Did not know this was out on the Super Famicom. I find this on the other one a lot, like on the N64. Like here it is, Masters 98. I have this. It's one of the cheapest game out there, but yeah, it's kind of cool to find that it's also on the Super Nintendo. I didn't know that. Here's Shutoku Drift Battle 2 for 300 yen. I bought this for 500 yen not that long ago. This is actually a really fun game. You're drifting down Japan's highway, which is obviously highly illegal, but in a video game, you can just do that. But it's a really fun game. It's uh, surprisingly good for a game that's 300 yen. Good old Pilot Wings over here, still 2,200 for the crazy shape that this is in. And here's the world's most sun faded Mystic Quest. This is actually a really, really good game, in my opinion, on the Super Nintendo. It's Final Fantasy USA in Japan, but in the West it's called Mystic Quest, and, and they kept the Mystic Quest title here as well. This is a really fun RPG, and it's super simple. It's kind of a dumbed-down version of the original Final Fantasy, but I like it a lot. There's a lot of mixed opinions on it, but, you know, everyone has their opinion. I really like this game. 
and surprised to see that Final Fantasy 4 is up to 3,850. Man, I really gotta start getting these in if this is the prices that they're giving them at. That is a lot. Tactics Ogre over here for 880. It doesn't have anything in it. It's just a cart in a box. It doesn't have the, the tray or anything else, but still fun to find. Then over at the Famicom section, another section I've been neglecting a lot these days. They seem to have a lot of these Namcot boxes. I love these. These are all sports games mostly, but there's also some really fun games on here. I think Wagyan Land is in a hard shell case like this. I love how the Famicom does that and they're really fun to collect. I'm just not that into baseball. Um, here's a golf game that is also really fun. 880. They're really well priced. I think Famicom is definitely coming down the last few days because I think that that generation is getting older and the newer kids are uh, collecting different stuff. Here's the Shonen Jump Anniversary Famicom Jump 880. That's a really good price for the original one. I don't think there's anything else in here other than the game. It doesn't feel like it, but yeah. There's Road Fighter from Konami, another classic hard shell game. I like hard shell. It's, uh, it's timeless for sure. All right, so definitely <laughs> scoring big. I already have quite the heavy basket over here. Let's go see what their junk section holds and if you can find any super discounted treasures over there. This is a great hard off. I really like this area. Really pays to go for a walk every once in a while, right? And yeah, the junk section looks really good. There's a clear yellow controller for the PS2. Definitely want to start collecting these every once in a while, but 330, it's missing the nub. I would want it in like working condition if I do get this. And look at their Sega Saturn section. Really cool that they have a bunch of stuff here that I also don't usually find. Sega Rally over here for 550. I think I'm gonna be taking this home as well. I've been looking for this one and online, this one always seems to go for so much, but I really like Sega Rally, the original. So I'm, I'm gonna be taking it home. I, my, I don't even have a working Saturn, but I love the Saturn for what it is and I do collect games for it. Hopefully I'll get a nice one at one point. Sega Rally. Here's the tower. This is actually Sim Tower. Before it was Sim Tower, they kind of bought the rights to it and uh, Maxis made it into a game at some point. I'm not sure what the story is, but in Japan, this game is known as The Tower and it's a really good game. I really like this version of it. It's on the Saturn and it's also on PC. There's a lot of different versions of it. LGR did a whole video on it, I think, but really cool to find for the Saturn over 880 is also not a bad price at all. And here is SimCity 2000 for the Saturn. I'm gonna leave this one here, but it's also really fun that they even have it. There's another one next to it that's uh, also 550. SimCity 2000 for the Saturn. Man, their Saturn prices are really good, but then again, Saturn prices in general are uh, usually good. Even their Dreamcast section is well stocked. They've got this big old, uh, what is this, Nakoruru? game i don't know what this is it seems to be some kind of visual novel but i do know nakoruru she's the girl from samurai showdown which i guess she has a spin-off on the dreamcast that's kind of cool and here's eternal arcadia 2750 again really cool just not really into sega dreamcast games for the time being you gotta space it out i guess my basket's already filling up quite enough over here um yeah let's uh Let's go pay for these and then move over to the next store because it's already getting heavy. <laughs> and for 880, here is a Saturn. I'm always tempted when I find these. This is completely working. Uh, I've got a fried Saturn at home. It's the disc or the laser doesn't work. And yeah, I'm always tempted when I find these. Um, I might look for a cheaper one that doesn't have the box because it's not like I have the space the store boxes as well and they don't seem to have one over here right now so I'll leave that for a later date. I like buying Saturns at Hard Off because Hard Off has a warranty, right? So when it doesn't work or something goes wrong with it, you can return it as opposed to buying it online and then you find out that this craps out after a week and now you're stuck with a broken Saturn, which is what happened to me. And look at their little glass section. They have Snow Bros over here, 297,000 yeah, that is that is car money. You can literally buy a car 
have it insured and then your gas for the rest of the year will also just include this money in Japan that is crazy to buy for a Famicom game they've got the most mintiest magic sword that I've ever seen over there 5,500 and Adventure Island 2 in the box with the open top but for 3,300 that is actually a really really good price for that Adventure Island is, is super popular in Japan and it's also not cheap then here we have this Dragon Ball game I have no idea what this is it just says Bandai and I'm definitely gonna look this up later. It looks like it might be a cassette tape or, or I, I have no idea. It says Super Saiyan something and I'm just gonna look this up later to see what it is, but it is very, very interesting. So this is actually a Bandai Playdia game, not an audiobook, but it's pretty close. So the Bandai Playdia was kind of a revolutionary console way back in 1994. It was a CD-based system. It used little CDs like the GameCube does, and it's kind of like an interactive full motion video adventure. Think Dragon's Lair and the like. It plays full motion video and it's usually anime. So there's Hello Kitty, Dragon Ball, and all of those franchises because it's made by Bandai. And you kind of just go through the adventure Adventure. Sometimes there's menus and you can choose what to do. It's all time-based and it's pretty simple. It kind of flopped for the time, but it's really cool to find. I would have picked this up if I knew what this was at the time. It's a super interesting console. They're not too expensive these days, but as CD-based systems goes, they can be really finicky. If you do happen to find one, and I'm gonna do my best to get one and show you guys, uh, make sure you do. It's a really interesting system and there's no emulators for it. There's no other way to play this other than just get your CD in your Playdia and go through the menus. I don't know, I thought it was a super cool system and I'm really happy to have found it. I'm gonna be looking out for these in the future. Then they've got some expensive N64 games in the back. Bomberman 2 2750 and Majora's Mask for 3,300. Not sure why these are in this thing, but yeah, I guess because the other ones are so cheap that that's their definition of an expensive N64 game. Then there's a big clock tower in the back there. Look at that, for Windows 95, it's a 11,000 yen. I've, I've never seen the PC version of Clock Tower. I do like it. I love Clock Tower on the PlayStation. I actually didn't know there was a computer version, but that's really cool to find. Something to look out for, I guess. Always loved how anything Hudson did their multi-tap for Bomberman. The Super Nintendo one. This is the Saturn one. You can see that by the ports. And it's, yeah, that's really, really, really cool. They, um, it always looks like Bomberman. And I, I love to have these things laying around the house. I think I have almost all of these. And here's an Ardu boy. I've never seen an Ardu boy in the wild. That's such a specific thing to have in a hard dog. Here's another Mega CD down here with a bunch of accessories. Really cool to find. I want a Mega CD so bad. 55,000, I guess. You know, when my YouTube channel blows up and I become a millionaire, I'm gonna buy Sega CDs for the boys and we're all gonna play mediocre full motion video game titles. Here's the inbox Virtual Boy, 55,000. That is a lot, but it comes with Galactic Pinball if you want to uh, burn your retinas that way. Then, not video game related, but definitely Japan junk related. Here's a uh, drink pour omatic for 1,000 yen. You can put your drink in the little cup holder there and then she'll pour it. <laughs> It's a thousand yen. That's so cool. This, these, these, this hard off just takes in everything. You can just bring your mother-in-law and they'll, they'll put her on a shelf for a thousand yen. <laughs> Another thing in 4AM Laundry's long list of things I don't have space for, but really want is GPUs. Look at this old GeForce GTS 250 and the way old GPUs look. I want to have like a big warehouse of stuff and then I'm gonna put all of these GPUs on the wall and it'll look amazing. I'm, maybe, maybe we gotta grind it out a bit more before we get there. But it's, yeah, I really love looking at GPUs. What if we just shoot an entire episode of 4AM Laundry on one of these handy cams and just straight up just port it directly. There's a way to get the output on like an SD card. There's like a thing you attach to it, but uh, definitely really cool idea to maybe do a uh, like a whole episode just on one of these old cameras with progressive scan. Mm -hmm. This one has SD cards though. I don't know if it works. It's in the junk section. Of course it doesn't. Right, really crazy to find this hard off on top of this grocery store and it's like one of the best ones I've ever been in terms of good deals and N64 games and stuff that you don't find usually. It really goes to show you that you don't really have to go that far 
uh, out of Tokyo to find places like this. So it's a beautiful day out and it's still kind of early. So let's go to the next one and see what we can find. I think there's a few around this area that I found that should be really fun to explore. Let's go. All right, so that's all the time that we have for today. It's already like a 20 minute video and I do want to split these up in multiple parts. This was a super interesting adventure. I can highly recommend Mitaka for game hunting. It's really fun. It was a really cool trip. I really enjoyed it. The weather is kind of chilly. It's that perfect weather for walking where it's not super hot outside, but it really wasn't that cold either. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you can see next week's video as we wrap this adventure up. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.